Nick the Camo ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. Now, really important stuff. The underlying letter represents the symbol of the element. Okay, so let's look at the underlying letter for each one of them. The letter N, Nick. What uh, element in the Pyrrhon table we're looking at is nitrogen. The C for camel represents carbon, the symbol for carbon. CL, okay, um, and it's not written as C capital L, it's C in lowercase l, and that represents chlorine. The S here for sulfur, the P for phosphorus, okay. So that's what um, the underlying letter in each one of those words stands for. The consonants, okay, and those are uh, designated with each word, okay, they are the, you know, it written in black. The consonants represent the number of oxygens that are present with the symbol that starts off each word. And the vowels represent the number of negative charges that follow, okay, and we're going to, uh, to see that breakdown right now. So, let's move on. Nick, okay, the underlying letter is N, okay? How many consonants does uh, the word Nick have? It has three. How many vowels? One vowel. So what does that all mean? So how do we all put it all together? Well, we start off with the letter N, the nitrogen. The number of consonants represents three oxygens. So we're gonna write N and then an O3. The vowel now, represents the negative one charge. And because there's only one vowel, okay, in the word Nick, there is only one charge, and that charge is a negative charge, negative one. So now, we don't read it as nitrogen oxygen three, we read this as the following, nitrate. Notice how the name for the non-metal part used to be I-D-E, okay, that was, the IDE, and that represented the nonmetal. But in terms of polyatomics, ATE, the part that we said, Nick the Camel ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. That eight is represented in the name of the polyatomic. Okay? So we don't have a, normally we'd have nitride, but that was without the oxygen. Okay? Nitride, okay? Whatever. The N, it was negative three in the, according to the periodic table. That's nitride. But the nitrate, the nitrate is NO3 with the negative one. Okay, so let's look at the, uh, the next example. Camel, the underlying letter is a C. Number of consonants, there are three. Number of vowels, there are two. So. How do we put it all together? Well, we start off with the letter C. How many consonants? Well, there are three consonants, so it represents three oxygens. So CO3, and how many vowels? There are two vowels. They represent two charges, two negative charges. So CO3, negative two, okay? Uh, it's a derivative of carbon, okay? But the ending has an A-T-E, so it's carbon eight. We don't make reference to the oxygen. The A-T-E ending here tells us that oxygen is present with whatever's in front of it, carbon, okay? Or with nitrogen, as it was with the example before that. Next example, clam. Underlying letter, or should we say letters, CL, number of consonants, three, number of vowels, one. So how do we put it all together? Well, CL, there are three consonants, so three oxygens. Number of vowels, there's one, so one negative charge, so negative one. So what element um, are we making reference to? We're making reference to chlor uh, the chlorine, but because it's a polyatomic and it has oxygen present, we call it chlorate. Okay, uh, supper. Okay, the underlying letter S, number of consonants, four, 
the number of vowels, two. So, how do we put it all together? Well, start off with S. Four consonants, four oxygens, so SO4, two vowels, two negative charges, negative two, and because we're making reference to sulfur uh, and the ATE ending, so we call it this entire compound here, SO4 negative two, we call that sulfate. And lastly, Phoenix, please, uh, very important that you know how to spell the word Phoenix. Same thing goes with supper. Okay, we don't uh, forget that extra P. Uh, so Phoenix, uh, underlying letter is P. Number of consonants, four. Number of vowels here are three. So how do we put it all together? Well, start off with P. Okay, four consonants, four oxygens, so PO4. Three vowels, three negative charges, negative three. Okay, and the name is the derivative of phosphorus. So because there's oxygen present, we call that phosphate. Okay. So some other polyatomics that don't follow the Nick the Camel rule that you must memorize. NH4 plus one, or just positive, is the ammonium ion. Okay. So this, we're going to treat that as a metal. And then the OH negative, which is the hydroxide ion. So those are the only two that don't really follow the, um, the Nick the Camel rule, okay? Some others are what we call the hydrogen polyatomics. How do we know them? Well, if we look at the charges, if we look at the charges, ignore the hydrogen. The minute we add hydrogen, carbonate alone, just carbonate, without that, okay, was CO three, negative two. But the minute we add the hydrogen in, okay, the minute we add the hydrogen in, we are also gonna take away one of the charges, okay? If we look at the next example here, sulfate without the hydrogen was SO4, negative two. But now that we add the hydrogen, okay, we remove one of the charges. And same thing goes with phosphate. When we looked at phosphate without the hydrogen, it was PO4, negative three. But the minute we add hydrogen to it, we drop one of the charges, okay? And this, the hydrogen phosphates only works with carbonate, sulfate, and phosphate. We could not drop the charges for nitrate, so you would not have a hydrogen nitrate. Um, or a hydrogen chlorate. So those are two of the ones that you're not gonna find hydrogen polyatomics for. Okay, moving on.